Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about helping other people to survive life. Isn't that what life is really about? It's about making relationships, marketing relationships, and actually understanding how important people are to our service in the world that we play. You see, as an employee of a company, we are responsible for how we interact with the clientele, the prospects, and every visitor to our organization. And in truth, when we don't pay attention to those people, when we presume to know who they are based on what they look like or how they dress or what their beard length is or anything like that, we might totally miss out an opportunity to not only help someone else, but to help ourselves to move our positions of power much higher in the world in our careers and in our lives. You see, missed opportunities come from people misjudging others. It literally happened to me one time in life where I met a gal at an event. And because of how she was dressed, I sort of dismissed her because she wasn't dressed for the day. I sort of was able to rationalize later in life that she might have just come from her spending time with her children or doing something at their day school or something to that. And so I sort of realized the va the vanity of my own self and not giving her mind. What ended up happening was she was actually one of the speakers on the panel. And I fell madly in love with how she spoke, her intelligent mind, her beautiful soul, and how she really loved on people. She truly did that. She hugged everyone, almost to the point of my awkwardness, because in our business world as men, we're not allowed to do that. We get marked one way or the other if we do, and openly that's okay. Women get away with a lot, and that's true. What I loved the most about her, though, was her love of people, her social skills, her networking abilities, and her mental prowess for the business mind of the world. She is truly a logical individual, and I love that about her. But I don't want to talk about love right now. What I really want to talk about is a life worth living. A life worth living is about being proud. It's about being loud, but it's also about having privacy of your personhood. That means that you have the right to decide who you allow in your life and who you allow out of your life. You have the right to decide who you're going to bring into the fold of your family. And what I mean by family is not your birth family, but actually the people that come into your life, that allow you to become more in life, that really honor your spirit and soul and your marketing skill sets for your own life, your career capabilities, your skill sets, your talents. And openly, what we like to, like to talk about is our time, our talent, and treasure is usually what we're providing to other people. The resources that we bring to teams is what really makes a difference in the world. That's how famous people get there. They get there through teaming. They get through there through relationships. They get there through love. They get there through honor. They, they get there through a lot of different aspects of the relationship world in terms of probably the good, the bad, and the ugly of good days, bad days, and brilliant days where everybody shines. And the truth is that's what we're talking about in these Magic and Mayhem casts, although of late they've been focused on my struggles with the law. You see, the law has gone out of its way to sort of interfere with my life to really ruin my life because other men decided to take away my rights. They openly chose to use their opinion and other documentation that people immorally, illegally, and illicitly provided to them, private information that they had no right to have, to ruin my rights in another situation. I haven't even gone to trial for that situation. Frankly, it should have been thrown out completely because of the number of huge international declaration of human rights violations that I've experienced so far, on top of federal law violations that I'm experiencing every single minute of the situation. I had a criminal situation that was merely a mix-up of words, a lack of communication, a ridiculous man pulling a gun on me, turning into a total fiasco in my life, and openly he had no right to pull a gun on me. I wasn't threatening him anyway, but that's the lie that was placed on file, and then supposedly there's all these witnesses. There was nobody else there but me and him and a whole bunch of slew of security guards, and then eventually a slew of Indianapolis police officers. So where do these witnesses come from? I don't really know, but that's not the point of my podcast. My point is that in life, we have moments of time to say, gosh, I really don't think this is worth ruining man's life over. That in truth, that when I ruin a man's life, I take my own life into the problem of the world, but I also put in front of the Lord God in heaven an illness of my own that says that I think that I have the lawful right to ruin someone's life, to destroy their legal name, to put them in chains in a jail and openly to violate their right to say, no, this didn't happen because other people didn't schedule on time. But that's the reality of what people do, that people try to harm other people intentionally. I'm in the midst of a game of sorts because right now I've got a lot of things going and coming from my life things of property that I purchased at the modest of means of my life going stolen from my 
own storage units, my own vehicle, my own car when it was in, impound, and openly, isn't that a violation of federal law? But who's paying attention? Only me, perhaps. The reality is, though, that any person like me can go through something like this. The locks on our homes don't really work, and in truth, they don't really provide the security that we all hope they do. It's probably why home invasions occur, and it's likely why other things get stolen. But the real illness in the world is the theft. The theft and belief that if we play this little mental health game on this individual, we can take over control of their life. We can literally put someone in jail, we can put them into mental health, we can medicate the crap out of them without their consent or permission, and that right there is a violation of the international United Nations human rights law. Now, why is it that local people don't know about this law? Have we so forgotten that we're a world power in the United States being out there loud and proud, talking to other nations about these violations, and yet we do it right here in the local community? What is wrong with people? We have people who call us and lie to us about their goals and what they're trying to do for us. We have Christian writers who think that they have the ability to go in and harm a person for private information that's not their lawful right to know or have or do anything with. We have family members, perhaps, that are trying to take our documentation, alter it, or to just simply keep copies of it as if they have a lawful right under federal law to do so, and they absolutely do not. Every adult in the world has the right to the privacy of their paperwork, the privacy of our financial accounts. And we make decisions in life and in business based on what other people share with us about what they're going to do, how they're going to pay us, when they're going to do it, whether they'll do it on time, because our lives revolve around the income and assets of our life and the expenditures we need in order to produce a life. When we get an agreement from someone that they're going to pay us for something so that we can in turn turn around and pay a bill, we are expecting that payment. It's actually a verbal agreement underneath federal and local law. When that person decides to change the agreement and mess around and take their time, it creates for us a litany of financial abuse because we get hit with the pings and dings possibly of various type of overdraft charges if we were anticipating that one income was gonna offset an expenditure that was coming due. That is how we handle our lives, isn't it? It's how we live in this world. Some of us live at the highest of echelon of society. Other of us live at the most humblest and meekest of means, but not always by our own accord. Sometimes it's a little hit by a cyber attack. Sometimes it's a family member stealing our property. Sometimes it's someone in our relative group who thinks they have the right to get onto a computer that someone else gifted to us and monkey around in our software. Other times it's just a total stranger thinking, I want that item, I'm gonna take that item. He's no longer gonna have that item that's properly his. And openly that's a mental illness right there, the belief that something someone owns and purchased with their own hard earned dollars and discretionary income is not that person's right to keep without theft. You see, theft is that gateway sin to other illnesses like trying to take over control in someone's life, trying to make them look and feel mentally unwell. That is actually hazing and harassment. The monitoring of someone's movement in the world is not only a, visit, a, a violation of civil rights law, but it is also a violation of international human rights law in terms of the act of mobility. We also have rules and regulations on our health care in which are falling underneath international human rights law that says that we have the right to choose our own physicians. You see, when other men get involved in our life and try to use local, local law to trump our lives, we actually have federal laws and international laws that provide us safekeeping. In my life, I've been looking for a lawyer. I've called literally every single lawyer in, the, in Indianapolis in an impoverished state. I said, could you possibly have a bill go to me net 30 days so that I would have some time to produce the money I need to pay you a reasonable wage? Most of them say no. They want their money up front. I understand this. I used to do that in my business practices. Any marketing job would get paid up front so that they were securing the time with me over the next 12 weeks. Any kanji camp Japanese language student would pay their monthly fee, but they agreed to that entire year as a term of promise that they were going to study that long. You see, that's how men in professional services conduct their lives. It's how they produce an income. And it's what I train in my programs called the spirit of your company. 
But in truth, when it comes time to protecting our lives, we turn to the public defenders, we turn to the prosecutors to do their job correctly, we turn to the FBI agents to make sure they don't ruin our lives, and yet what can happen? A religious belief, a mental health notion, an opinion about something can destroy a life. It can take away all kinds of time, it can take away all times of money, it can take away all times of property, it can take away all sorts of resources, it can destroy technology capabilities, it can ruin intellectual property, it can destroy a life and practically it can violate every single law of the land and get away with it only if the other people who are required to follow the law in law enforcement fail to protect our rights because of their own personal beliefs or inklings about what they think is right for us, as opposed to what is in fact actually federal law underneath the U.S. Constitution. The whole reason that men and women die when they go overseas to protect our country from a foreign infidels who try to come in here, ruin our crops, ruin our land, put in poisonous snakes, and bring in all sorts of animals that belong in the jungle into the homes of human beings. Isn't that against God's law? God's law did not make a snake to live in someone's home. He put them in the forest to take care of other things. Now, I only use that as an example. There are people who keep alligators. There are people who keep lions and tigers and bears in Zionsville. There's all sorts of places around the world of people with lots of money who create exotic things, even women in California who modify their entire face and complexion and bodies to look more like a cat than a human being. But because they have money, they're allowed to do it. Yet those in the humblest of means, the humblest of places, often get pissed on by people who purportedly think they're helping. I've had several people direct me to go certain places to possibly find a free food or female only to arrive and find the place totally empty, no one on duty to service the place, even though the doors are open and welcoming for a self-guided tour, but there is nothing like what they've described of supposedly purportedly being there in the currency of this little marketplace of homelessness. I've seen a lot of men walking around town who's homeless. How we carry ourselves is really up to our mental state and how we're willing to go forward in life and how we're willing to struggle and fight to do things. But when we get help from people and they make promises, we make other decisions in our life about how we're going to manage our time, our money, our resources, our communication tools, our internet, interpersonal uh, communications, our networking capabilities, and how we manage our entire time management of the day. And literally, that is our lawful right. Now, when other people get involved and start to lie about what we say because they decide to do things illegally and have meetings in places that aren't lawful instead of in the places they're supposed to so they can modify records and put their own little human opinion on someone's life into it, that is immoral in front, in front of the Lord. We have a lot of mental health providers who are actually experimenting on mental health patients who never gave their consent to do anything like that to them. They use audio files, they use chemicals, they use drugs, they use all sorts of stuff that the individual doesn't want in their body but might not be able to say no because some judge somewhere said, we're just going to do this because this physician, this sole single person with an opinion has thought this is right for this individual. There might be a slew of other people who don't have the same high level of certification who've done similar evaluations based on their length of time and work and their seasoned marketing profession and find something else entirely different about that individual's life. I've seen this happen many times. I've also seen family members lie, steal, and cheat a man out of a life, and that is illicit in front of God, not to mention illegal under federal law. But it only matters if a police officer takes the time to do the work or if they're involved in doing it, then we really are in trouble as a nation. When police officers lie, steal, and cheat from people's lives, it means any human being could do it too, because the law doesn't work. Now, as a reporter, I know that reporters have gotten beaten for speaking the truth about law enforcement and mobbing and other sorts of things. I know that that concept of human rights is completely gone from those officers' minds who do those beatings, and those beatings might be physical. There's news reports in the news of women being beaten up, and there's also reports in the news of how they use technology. And I learned by talking to an engineering man who sort of works in the community that they actually borrow our phone lines, our cell phones, our internet connections to monitor people. Now, how awful is that? You see, privacy today is no longer the same for us all. The internet has sort of moved everyone to believe that they think they have the right to borrow on people's lives. Now it's true, I would love to know what's going on in a person's life that I madly love. 
I'd like to know she's happy, she's well adjusted, she's got a good job, her kids are doing well. I would love to know that information. But I don't spend hours on Facebook looking things over because it's there's no point. She finally got the point that she had to start producing business information, but the reality is she lied to that technology company and told them something illicit about me. And as a result, I guess I get banned from seeing anything she produces in the world, despite the fact that she is my legal heir and gets my inheritance if some Yahoo police officer shoots me. You see, the problem is that I just received information from my little uh, life insurance policies, and when I got them picked up at the mail with someone driving me there, and I stayed at that person's house, the next morning those documentations were gone. And the lie was placed that they didn't take them. Really? Then who else did? Who comes into a locked home, who goes into a locked room, who gets into someone's personal property and thinks they have the right to steal? I don't really know. It certainly wasn't the way that my father, a U.S. citizen and a retired lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, taught me to live. But there are other people in my family who do lie, who do manipulate, who do steal, and I'm embarrassed by them all. My mother really struggles with loving all her kids, but she loves the liars and the thieves more than she does me, and that's openly okay. I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to express my opinion. That's allowed me underneath the First Amendment of Rights of the United Constitution, and it certainly protects my rights as a reporter to share about my life experiences and the stories of my life. Everything I share is factually true. Yes, there's information I practically don't disclose, but that is my lawful right. I have the right to decide what I'm going to share about my life and what I'm not. Like I could celebrate the fact that I lost actually 14 inches around my waist. I've lost nearly, almost, possibly 80 pounds. Not intentionally, just it's the life of maturing as a seasoned man. It's maturing about what I eat. It's a difference in how I conduct my life because I submit my desires to the Lord. And he produces food for me in moments of the humblest of times when no one in a family will do anything other than feed their sheep and feed their dogs, but they'll lie on my life and ruin my records. Now, it sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not. I'm telling you the facts of my life that any person can violate my privacy and go online and look up. And there are men and women who do that. And then they gossip about it and they tell the story. But where is their Christianity in that? Have they reached out and given me a call to say, hey, I heard you've gone through something really troublesome. Do you need a sofa to sleep on? Do you possibly need a meal? Would you like to go to lunch? I'd be happy to treat you to a McDonald's dollar hamburger. Openly, do they do that? Or do they believe in their souls they're doing something godly by not getting involved at all? You see, in life, we have moments in time to make a huge difference for other people. And the reason that people stay homeless is of two mainly. That the God-fearing people of this land think that homelessness is a mental illness, which it's not, and that they don't recognize that people often need employment opportunities to shine and soar. And sometimes, in those moments, it means a person needs some new training to get themselves out of things. I've seen the brokenness of men. I know the difference between the addicts and those who just have lost the loves of their lives, and it changed them forever. It changed their level of performance, it changed their abilities, but when people are attacked by family members, things are stolen, business cards are taken, phone calls are impeded, all those sort of things which are sometimes hard to prove, other times not so hard to prove by the people watching those doing it, we really have to look at where society's going. That we've so lost the love of God, the love and praise of what he can do when people simply stop and smell the roses and discover and celebrate the uniqueness of the human soul that they might cross their path today. May not be with them tomorrow, but today is today. Who did you meet today that you could highlight? Who did you meet today that you could celebrate? Who did you meet today that you would openly love to share a lunchtime with to get to know better? I've met a few gals through business networking. One of the loveliest women I've ever met just shined and glowed. And you know what? I said this to her and she said it's because of her love of Jesus. And you know what? I believed it. I totally believed it. That she openly had that going on for her. And her prayer life seems robust. Her Christian life seemed well because she was in a Bible group of sorts for 14 some years with the same people. Think about the incredible relationship marketing she's able to do if she could keep those relationships going week after week after week doing those things. Most men would kill for that, but most men who lead those groups don't know how to produce that very well. 
the one upsmanship, the I'm better than yours, the I have this, I don't have that. I've literally sat in my own home, my own classroom with men in a Bible study who were talking about gifting 10 grand to somebody while somebody else in the entire group was struggling just to put food on their table. It's true, people have the right to decide what they're going to do with their own money. But when people are standing before you with difficulties in life, you sometimes have to ask yourself, Lord, what is it that I'm supposed to do here to help this individual, regardless of how I feel about God in my own soul? You see, whether or not you believe in God doesn't matter to me. Whether or not you like who I am or like what's going on for me doesn't really matter either. What matters is your walk of your own faith, your own philosophy, your own belief in a higher power, your own belief in the humanity, your own belief in philosophy about doing good in the world, your own belief of how you give joys to the total strangers in your audience, but you won't help a guy who reached out and said, please help me. I only need this much help. I only need $200 or I only need $1,500 for this lawyer. I only need that. How different is it? Now, I've been reaching out to try and get sponsors. I've had one company re respond so far. I can't tell if other companies have responded because, in truth, someone's been stealing my mail. And openly, they stole mail out of my bags that was only in a vehicle of sorts that I got out of to go do shopping with or in a home in which I stayed overnight. And I'm about to lose that place where I was about to stay. I also have to face a legal situation with an incompetent lawyer, and that's really rough because I'm sure she means well, but she hasn't done anything right, and neither did any of those who came before her. They violated federal law, they violated human rights law, and practically the judge is participating in it, so what am I supposed to do? I'm faced with one of two options, and my family celebrates one of them, literally celebrates it. That is their illness that they have so failed God in their life, they so don't go to church, they so need not even think about their own righteousness other than the fact that they feel righteous. But the truth is in the Bible, it is clearly states that we should honor the people who are homeless, we should help the people impoverished, we should celebrate the souls of those who have gifts of the Spirit, and frankly, even those men and women don't help because they're worried about the competition. How ill is that? God gives who he chooses to gift. It's not something that is better or worse than someone else. It's just a different gift. In life, we've got moments of time to make a difference for someone else. Look at your life today. How close-knit is your family? If the only people in your life are your family and you lose your job, what are you going to do next? If you have no professional networking people in your life on a regular basis through some sort of really actually functioning networking group for your career, how are you going to go on? That's what I'm talking about, about making a life worth living. Making retirement with having is about what we do in our careers and how much income we gain and how much we do to invest in ourselves and we talk to the right financial planners or whatever the hell it is. Maybe we're smart enough and savvy enough to do it all ourselves and invest in gold or whatever it is. But in truth, when we become old and gray, do we have children who love each other well enough not to bicker and fight and try and manhandle each other during an elderly person's lifetime? Or will we really be suffering in a care facility because we failed to care for our bodies in healthy, loving ways, or we forget failed to care for other people like our spouses that puts us in a position of illness and humility that the Lord says, you know, you didn't learn this yet, so we're going to teach it to you now which literally means some person you don't even know is going to be wiping your ass and wiping your nose and literally putting food in your mouth that you pray to God you want to eat in the first place. And openly, you also will pray whether or not you have enough money to live in one of those facilities or whether you'll be old and homeless and losing your mind or your body on the streets of Indianapolis or any other city or town. Now, when I talk about making a life worth living or retirement and having, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about practically how we had a home that I loved for almost 10 years in the arts and design district of a large community and going within a couple years after that from the hazing harassment and stalking and mobbing on my life to being literally virtually homeless. I have a place to sleep tonight. Tomorrow, I don't know. I have food today. Tomorrow, I can produce. I figured out how to master that part of homelessness, that I'd love to teach other homeless men, but they have to be willing to rise to the occasion and how they care for themselves, how they walk, how they carry themselves, how they talk to people. And I can help them produce a free meal. But we don't outweigh our, our welcome at the places that give us a meal, and that's the mistake homeless people make. So, 
in life, we have moments in time to listen to people. We have moments in time to celebrate people's arts. We have moments of time to do all sorts of things. And I would love to talk to you online as a podcaster working for some company like MS or Disney or any other company in the telecommunications field or, in fact, the literal Hollywood, Hollywood realm of television, simply talking about the spirit of the Lord and how to celebrate that in other people. That would be my loving way of doing a job or helping people market themselves into better business. And here's what the rub is, that people say, well, if you're such a great marketer, why aren't you marketing yourself? I am every single day, but someone every single day gets on my computer and interferes with my lawful rights to my own technology. But you'd have to be sitting next to me to see it all happen and go down. So this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC talking about real life, love, honor, dignity, respect, regard, and making a life worth living in retirement with having by finding employment that we can love and honor our own skills, talents, and abilities within. If you've heard this audio cast today and you know of someone who openly has an opportunity, I'm going to gently ask for you to introduce me to them. I recognize that I look a little furrier than normal, but I'm sort of enjoying this beard because I'm really loving the reactions I get from people and I'm loving to see how God walks through and works through the people who just look at me and think I'm just like any other person. Those who treat me horribly have a little work to do in their souls. But there are moments and times that are so glorious that God gives me that I just can't get over it. Even in the weakest of moments, the humblest of times, we can celebrate life of ourselves and others. Make today a life worth living so that tomorrow you'll have a retirement worth having.